church. We're going to do our little hymn sing, so if you want to get your hymnals out, you can do that or just follow along on the screen if you think you know them well enough. Um, we're going to begin with Family of God. We're going to sing it through uh, two times, not just the one time, but, but twice. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Cross 
Thank you. Not only did I not know it, it was too high for me as well. <laughs> so thank you, Anna, for helping us out there. Last one. I think everybody will know this one. Number 702. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. I think we're going to sing this through two times as well. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, come and touch on some announcements as uh, folks are still coming in. Mailboxes, I have a yellow post-it note. Angie has the mailboxes done. So when you go to your mailboxes, not sure if they were done last Sunday or not, but it's for this Sunday. No, they weren't last Sunday. They are today. So when you go to your mailboxes, don't just grab out of the mailbox you're used to going to. It may not be yours. Uh, because they're done in alphabetical order and the alphabet changes sometimes of course when new names and so forth are put in. So double check uh, your box. I'm, I don't know if any were drastically changed that moved from one end clear to the other. Um, maybe? Okay. So uh, they may not be right next to where, you, they, used to, where they used to was. Um, so we want to make note of that. Also, uh, there have been some changes in the mother-daughter uh, evening, which we had announced the other week because there really weren't any plans that were made that we would have the mother-daughter um, banquet on May 31st. Now that stays the same. The banquet will be May 31st, but we're now because we're almost to the father-son banquet. <laughs> Suggestions were made in the meantime, why don't you just combine the two this year uh, and have it all together and so we decided that's what we're going to do. So things got changed up a little bit through the week. There is a sign-up sheet. It says mother, daughter, father, son. So in other words, everybody is welcome to come on Saturday night, May 31st at 6.30. The Food will be catered. Uh, the price for adults, I do not have this on the sheet. The price for adults is $9.95. It'll be a stuffed chicken breast, uh, string beans, mashed taters and gravy, uh, tossed salad, uh, and a dessert meal for $9.95 for adults. It's half price for children 4 to 10. Under 4, free. Uh, but 4 to 10, uh, half price. And like I said, 9.95 then from 11, 11 on up. So the sign-up sheet is not where all the other sign-up sheets are because there's too many sign-up sheets over there. So we moved it to the table this side of the water fountain. Need you to sign up as soon as you can if you're going to come 
because we only have this Sunday today and next Sunday and then I'll have uh, a day to turn the order in uh, to the caterer before we actually um, meet. Do I have that right? This Sunday and next Sunday, the 25th. And then, yes, uh, we, we have our banquet on the 31st. So we have today and next Sunday. You won't have to pay till that evening. We're not going to try to collect money. But because it's being catered, and I realize that people do get sick, that can happen. Uh, but because it's being catered, we'll have to pay for the number of meals. So please uh, just sign up if you really think uh, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be there. And we would. We would love to have everybody come. Um, so that's it on the mother-daughter, father-son banquet. Some people said, gee, maybe we'll like it so much we'll do it that way every year. I don't know. That remains to be seen. Uh, but for this year, it's going to be May 31st, and it'll be a combination mother-daughter father, son. Also, uh, Melanie asked me to announce about um, graduation Sunday. And last week we announced that we needed to know who our graduates are. I mean, we have an idea of, but every now and then we, we somehow miss one. Maybe somebody that's been away uh, at college and maybe not been to church for quite a while. We still want to recognize them. So if there's a graduate that you're aware of, that um, you can make us aware of, that would be very helpful. Uh, Melanie, you can call the church office with that number and we will get it to Melanie. Melanie, put your hand up there. There you go. Okay, so, so there's a form out there you can fill out with that person's name, any information you can give, even if it's just a name or a family or a parent's name or somebody, and then put it in Melanie's, uh, in Melanie's mailbox. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Okay, uh, Rochelle just gave me this sheet on the, the sale at uh, Ricky and Don Smith's, which is June the 13th that uh, there's a sheet in the narthex and food is needed and volunteers are needed so that would be helpful. If you have any questions you can see Rochelle or Linda Smith. Okay, thank you. Uh, th this evening I had said last week that I would have a meeting here if there was anybody in the congregation or anybody you might know that would be interested in going to Israel. So at 7 o'clock uh, this evening, we're going to meet, and I have in the bulletin that we'll meet in the fellowship hall, but I think what we'll do is meet up here. So uh, when you come this evening, if you're coming, and if you could let me know if you're coming, that would be helpful. Because to be honest with you, if nobody's interested, I don't need to show up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you have an interest, any interest, even a small interest in going, uh, we'd love to have you come and uh, listen to what's, what's shared. Um, I mean, if you're really desperate for any, something to do tonight and you didn't have anything else on your calendar, maybe you want to come. Um, but if you do have an interest, and, and, and you can let me know if you are coming this evening, then I'll be sure to be here. Um, so let us know about that. Also, uh, Vacation Bible School information, we need to get that information as soon as we can uh, in children registered and so on and so forth. Theta. Hold on one second. Pretty loud. Instead of people donating uh, items, Stephanie and I have discussed that if people would like to donate money, her and I and Norma would go out and get the things we need for Bible school because we have some left over from last year. So if there's any money anybody wants to give, you can give it to Norma Stahl, Stephanie Beaver, or myself. Okay. Now, does that pertain to food or crafts or? Just food. Just food, okay. So uh, in lieu of a donation of food items, of course, if you want to bring the food itself, you could, just you need to see Theta 
uh, for what uh, items are, are needed, uh, or Norma, or Stephanie, who's not here today, and that's a reminder of another announcement. Um, or you can give, you can give cash, uh, and they'll use it to buy the items that are needed for Vacation Bible School. Um, and, and Vacation Bible School is coming up quickly, the 16th through the 20th of June. And we want you to get the word out, too, to, child, to families and to children, uh, so that they don't miss that opportunity uh, to be here that week, uh, that week for VBS, which is going to be uh, going under the theme of Gangway uh, to Galilee. Stephanie Beaver had called uh, yesterday and said she wasn't going to be able to be here today and uh, didn't have anybody to take her class. So the, the class, the ladies class that normally meets in the uh, old sanctuary won't be meeting today. Uh, now if you decide among yourselves you still want to meet for fellowship or a time together, um, you're, you're welcome to do that. But there won't be any actual class today. Um, so I was supposed to pass that along to you. Um, sight and sound trip, still see Debbie. I don't know. Debbie, are there any tickets left? Okay, there's still a few tickets left for the sight and sound trip. There is a sign-up sheet in the narthex, or you can see Debbie about that. Um, there will be... Uh, this coming Tuesday night, we had moved the trustees and the Ad Council meeting around. That'll be this Tuesday, uh, 6.30 for trustees, 7.30 for Ad Council. Please remember, too, that on the 24th, um, the American Legion Post 25 will be here. Um, I'm just seeing if I don't have that. I think I missed the date. I have the time they're going to be here. Well, here this Saturday. It's, it is this coming Saturday already. Uh, at 11.40 in the morning, there'll be a brief service at our cemetery to honor our veterans. So we want to make sure that's, um, we make note of that. And Safe Sanctuaries training is on June 1st. Now, I understand uh, Ronnie's class, and which not, doesn't end up just being Ronnie's class. I think it's a lot of the classes downstairs, children's classes and so forth. Uh, and I don't know which classes exactly that it affects, but you know who it affects. They're going to be at Halfway Dam that morning for their Sunday school and so forth. Um, but then at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we have Safe Sanctuaries training here. Now, it was brought up to me this past week. I mean, we had to schedule this when they can come and do Safe Sanctuaries. Uh, so it ended up working out on Sunday, June the 1st. Someone had brought up to me that, well, it might be hard to get back here by 2 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. And if you are in need of doing safe sanctuaries because your certification is due, uh, you don't have to be here for, for it. You do have to be certified, and you'll have to go somewhere to be certified. We brought it here to be as convenient as possible for our, our people, maybe a little selfish on our part, some people may travel an hour to get here to take this uh, Safe Sanctuaries training. But you don't have to be here Sunday, June 1st, you, but you would need to attend a Safe Sanctuaries training somewhere else. So if you feel like it's a rush to get back here, don't sign up to come. But we will need you to sign up to attend one someplace else. Uh, so if you can just keep that in mind, it, it was never intended to interfere with any, anything else or, or your, your day. Um, I think people certified before Bible school too. Yeah, uh, yeah people, people should be certified before vacation Bible school if you're not certified now. And that's coming up, as we already mentioned, in, in the middle of June. So. Uh, I don't know how many other safe sanctuary training events there are, but I know there's none in the Lewisburg district. Uh, so it would mean traveling, traveling probably 45 minutes to an hour uh, or more to the nearest one. I uh, want to make mention, it's Bob and Bonnie Weirich's anniversary. Uh, it's Terry Newman. Is that Big Terry or Little Terry? Big Terry. Uh, is Big Terry over there somewhere? Um, Terry Newman's birthday. Quay Johnson is celebrating a birthday. Jessica Smith and Angie Weaver are celebrating a birthday. And Donnie Walter are celebrating birthdays um, this coming week. Anybody else celebrating an anniversary or a birthday that's coming up? No, got you covered. Okay. Uh, well, happy birthday to all the birthday people. And uh, are Bob and Bonnie 
Yes, there they are. The happy anniversary couple right there. Uh, happy anniversary to you guys. Any other announcements? Yes, Pat. Uh, all the ladies of the church, including the morning for girls, whether you attend this year or not, are welcome to meet us at Hoffman's for lunch on Wednesday at noon. This coming Wednesday at noon. Okay. 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 Uh, I think I have that in the bulletin too. So, uh, down below some of the announcements in the folded part. Um, that's, all, that's wonderful. Anybody else? Any other announcement? Pat? Is there a youth group tonight? There is no youth group that I'm aware of tonight. There is tonight? There is tonight. Okay, so if the youth want to meet with Jen after church, to discuss whether you're meeting tonight? Both groups. Both groups, junior and senior youth. Okay, perfect. Mark your calendars for uh, June 13th. There'll be a showing of alone, but not alone, up in Lewisburg at Campus Theater. Uh, we saw a preview of it, and it's a very good movie. It talks about uh, your faith journey, and uh, you, you need to see it, and you'll notice that on the uh, wall today, it says you're never alone with God. Amen. Put that on your calendar. If you can get to see it, it'll be at the Lewisburg Theater, and it's an afternoon showing, I think, on Father's Day weekend. Saturday and Sunday of Father's Day weekend. Outstanding movie about faith and also historical because it's all about what happened right in Penn's Creek in New Berlin. An Indian massacre back in the days of the French and Indian War. It's a true story that happened. Um, I won't go into all the details, um, but it's an outstanding, outstanding movie and you don't want to miss it. It's there that weekend. I don't know where else it'll be, but it's, in, it's called Alone, Yet Not Alone. So don't miss that movie. It is, if you, and if you like history, and it's like I said, it's something about our valley here. Uh, the Susquehanna Valley uh, moves on through uh, other states, ends up in Ohio, and then back again. But amazing movie, just an amazing movie. Any other announcements? Um, we ha do we have our basket here this morning? Do you, do you have the basket? Okay. Do we have any, I want to ask, in some weeks I, I don't, I fail to do it. Do we have any first time visitors here with us? First time visitors. I see folks are here, but I see most of them are not first timers. Uh, good to see you here. Uh, no first timers. Okay, um, birthday, birthday folks and anniversary. You already took care of it, didn't you? Sure. Okay. Good. Efficient people, I'll tell you. And and that's something that is done every single week that started five or six years, seven years ago. I don't even know. I've lost track. Out of Andy and Melanie's small group. <laughs> Pardon? It's hard. Yes, but it started back. Then, when we were meeting in Gene Walshaw's group, that Gene Walshaw's group, sorry, I almost gave you credit for something you didn't do, it, <laughs> Melanie. Uh, Gene Walshaw's group, which was, I don't know how many years ago, greeting people and giving them a little something on their birthday and their anniversary, various people, week in and week out, have taken on that responsibility to do that all these years. Uh, and I just want to thank all of you for, for making, because it really does. It is, people have commented to me, how special it makes them feel when they're greeted, uh, whether it's a first time visitor or whether it's somebody celebrating a birthday or an anniversary. And I just thank you for your faithfulness and con continuing that work all these years. Let's uh, stand up for a, a moment as we do each Sunday. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. Let each other know you're glad they're here this morning.
morning, Crystal. How are you? Thanks. Good. Good morning. Good morning. How are you girls? Good. How are you? Good. Wonderful. It's a beautiful day. It is. Good morning, Good morning. Nikki. How are you? I didn't see any visitors over here. Marissa's back. 63 years ago, I was mother. Is that right? Yes, you are. Good morning, young man. Good morning, Roy. Good morning, girls, again. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? How'd work go? Not best? I'll keep you in prayer. Hey. Okay. He's sneaking in on my girl. I saw. She didn't this want to smile this morning. This the song was thank you Lord it's not the thank you Lord it's the one we sung one time before you'll recognize it I think right away uh, but let's join our voices together thank you Lord
And God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Please be seated. Whew. You know, I could jump out of my skin when we're singing songs of praise like that. But you all think I'm strange enough as it is already. And if you saw me outside of my skin, whoa. That might just be frightening. What a wonderful opportunity God gives us uh, to gather together, to lift up his name in praise. Or not to be ashamed of the gospel, amen. Not to be ashamed of the truth, the way we feel, who we are. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later today in the service. But... Um, just want to thank the Lord. So why don't we bow our heads right now and continue to do that. Lord, you are so gracious and kind, so wonderful, so loving, so forgiving. And we stand before you, Father, as a people who are grateful. And I pray, Lord, that we'll never, ever stop praising your name. Never, ever stop saying thank you for what you've done. Our outstretched arm of praise is a response to your outstretched arm of love that touches and heals and brings hope and joy into our lives. And so hear our praise once again, O oh Lord. Know that we love you. And I pray that our hearts, our whole heart, Lord, belongs to you and to you alone. For we ask these things, Lord, and offer ourselves up to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Yesterday, uh, sometime yesterday, I'm not sure, maybe, forget if you said it was in the morning when Red, Red Crider was taken to the hospital. And Red is at Evan with double pneumonia. And possibly a, an infection in his blood. This morning his blood pressure dropped and his heart rate went up. Um, and so Esther is able to be here this morning, but we were together last night. And I know lots of prayers have been lifted up for Red. So please continue to keep uh, read in your in your prayers. Also, I have a card here to share with you, um, thanking thanking this congregation um, and saying how much it means uh, to this family. And it would be Jane Crotcher's family. Uh, how much it means to them for your prayers and for your thoughts and for your kindness. Uh, in this time when her, her mother, uh, Betty Trago, was ill and then 
uh, eventually passed. Um, and I know I just asked Jane this morning because she has uh, family, several, from Alaska uh, who made the trip in for the, for the service. And she said they all returned home safely. Uh, so that was also an answer to prayer. Uh, but she just appreciates you so much. And uh, again, your love and your kindness from this family of faith. Uh, but continue, if you will, um, to keep Jane and, and her family uh, in your prayers as they continue to grieve the, the loss of their mother, Betty. Do you have any prayer concerns? We've got the fellows with their microphones uh, ready to go here. Thank you, Toby. I have a couple that um, I'm not, I think it's Holy Spirit that they're going to, but... Uh, Lois and Danny Dunninger. Danny is having brain surgery tomorrow. And um, so pray for them for their safe travel and. Yes, what's, and what's the last name? Duttinger, D U T T I N G E R. Okay, Dan? Danny Duttinger is the one that's having the surgery, and Lois is the wife. Okay, thank you. Uh, keep praying for our uncle, uh, our family that came up from Florida. Uh, landed in the hospital two days after he was here. He's still in the hospital. Uh, he has ups and downs. Um, last night he went down again. Uh, he uh, is disoriented. Uh, he is a diabetic, so he has neuropathy in his feet. Uh, he cannot walk. He has breathing problems, and it just doesn't look good for him. So only by God will he probably turn around. Thank you. While Bell's getting the microphone, um, I want to share with you, Friday night I went to see a longtime friend of mine that we uh, went to school together, played sports together, um, who is very ill right now. and. Um, he had prostate surgery a couple years ago, and the uh, prostate was removed, and was, but it's a very, very aggressive form of cancer that he has, form of prostate cancer. Tumor returned in that area where the prostate was taken. Uh, it's now the size of a grapefruit. The tumor was detected in January. By March, it was already huge. Um, so far, radiation hasn't touched it. He's undergoing chemo and hopeful that that uh, will help reduce the size, but it's just not looking really good right now. And uh, we're praying for a miracle, but his name is Jim Ciro. We've lifted Jim up to you before and his wife, Carol. Uh, so if you please pray for Jim Ciro, C-E-R-O. Go ahead, Bill. I have a few prayer requests. Uh, remember Wanda, she came through her surgery okay, uh, but she's got a lot of pain getting up and down right now, yep. Um, she was lightheaded here the other day, so just remember her. And with me, they found out I have a terrible infection, so they have me on a very strong antibiotic. And I have two aunts the day before Mother's Day, uh, Pauline Dietz uh, fell, broke her arm, and she has Alzheimer's. Uh, there has to be somebody with her 24 hours a day. And I have another aunt, she fell the day after Mother's Day, Alice Strasser, and she had broke some kind of uh, disc in her back, so she's down at Penn Lutheran uh, Nursing Home. Thank you, Bill. I spoke to Wanda yesterday. She was pretty upbeat, so I was grateful for that. Um, My daughter, Kim Warren, she has uh, some problems with her kidneys now uh, as a result of the lupus that she has. So okay. keep her in your prayers. Thank you. Continue prayers for Gary. He starts his chemo again tomorrow for three days, so he's been real good this week, but he starts his chemo again tomorrow. And also, pray for the elections on Tuesday. We need to get 
the proper people in place for the Amen. November election. Amen. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Stuart. Uh, I want to pray for my sister-in-law, Tina Reichenbach. Uh, her brain tumor had returned. Uh, they're going to talk to the doctors this Tuesday, I think it is. They'll see about surgery again. So continue to pray for her again. Thank you. Prayers for Chad Lover. He gets his shield made this week on Tuesday to start his radiation. Thank you. We ask, ask prayer for a family member of ours that their son-in-law passed away this morning. Thank you, Jane. Paul Kramer, by the way, Anna's Paul, uh, who's been having a lot of pain over these last, I guess goes now months, uh, is having a surgery this coming Wednesday. So please keep Paul Kramer in your prayers. And as I was looking over here at uh, Red Crider's normal place to sit, I look back and I see our other Red, Red Shamori back here in the corner. Uh, please keep Red uh, in your prayers too. Prayers for Bev and Van Reedy. Um, Van has an aggressive skin cancer. They just found out on um, Friday, or I'm sorry, on Thursday, and they immediately went and <coughs> did surgery. Um, they took a big spot off of his back, and it's just not looking real good. Mm. Thank you, Eve. Remember Banks Waller this morning. He's not feeling well. That's why he's not here. And keep Eleanor. Eleanor and Banks both in your prayer in our prayers. Okay, thank you. Any others? Let's take a few minutes then. And um, if you wish to pray at
There you go. Oh, wonderful. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Excited to be here? Everybody's excited. Somebody has a dollar? Is that what you got for coming this morning? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I wanted to bring a mirror this morning so that you could each look in it. But if I had a mirror, and you looked in that mirror, what would you see? Us. Us. Yourself, right? Okay. Uh, well, that's what I see when I look at you. Isn't that funny? I see when you look in a mirror. But that only tells me what I see. It doesn't tell me who you are, does it? So if you were to tell me who you are, who would you tell me you are? <laughs> what, would you what would you tell me about yourself? Warrior cats. I have no clue what that is. Warrior cats? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so you would tell me that you like to read. And you told me specifically what kind of books you like to read, right? Okay. What would you tell me about yourself? Or yourself? Name. What, honey? The name, like my name. Your what? My name. Your name, okay. And your name is? Chastity. I mean, I know your name, but everybody else may not know your name. Chastity. Yes. Okay. So, what else would you tell me about yourself? Anybody? Daisy, what would you tell me about yourself? I don't know. Anybody want to? What would you tell me about yourself? Nothing? Are we all that shy this morning? What would you say? That I play baseball. You play baseball. Okay. That tells me something about you. You, probably, you like sports. Okay. Izzy? So when you can see the dark side of me, no one will ever change the animal I've become. Yay. A song. A song? Okay. You like to sing? No. You don't like to sing? Oh, you're afraid I'm going to ask you a solo, to sing a solo. Okay. So some of you like sports? Who likes sports? See, now I'm pulling the answers out of you here. But if you were to tell me who you are, you didn't have a lot to say. But you should have a lot to say about who you are. Because guess who you are? You're children of God. You're children of God. You couldn't want to be anything more than that. In Ephesians, Paul talks about that. Did you know that even before you were born, God knew you? Did you know that even before the creation of the world, God knew you and had a plan for you? That you're his child. In love, it says, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. That we could come to actually be adopted into his own family. We sang the, the song earlier that Jeanette played, the family of God. We're all part of the family of God. We've been invited in. We've been predestined, the Bible says. 
God's intention for us, his hope for us, was that we would one day belong to him and be part of his family. That he would be our father and we would be his children. Children of God. So if somebody ever asks you who you are, and you're struggling for an answer, you can always tell them, I'm a child of God. And if that doesn't raise their eyebrows, I don't know what will, especially today with the world we live in. But you can tell them that we're children of God, right? That's who we are. That's where our identity is. I'm going to be talking with the big people about some other stuff related to that in just a little bit. But I want you to be aware that you are loved by God, that every one of you is precious to God. Every one of you. And that yes, you have a name. And yes, there's things you like to do, sports you like to play. But more important than all of that is the idea. Gunther is one of our most faithful acolytes. Chastity likes to acolyte too. Who else is acolyted here? He may have told me that he, he's an acolyte. Chastity likes to acolyte. Izzy, you've acolyted. We don't like to, but she, she has. <laughs> she, just, she just told me she doesn't like to. But that's okay. You, but you still do it. And sometimes we do things that we maybe don't like to do, but we still do them. And especially if it's for the Lord, we'll still do them. But you're special. Gunther, I really appreciate your faithfulness to be like so often. But that's not who you are. That's something you do. That's something you do to serve the Lord. But who you are is a child of God. Precious in his sight. So let's just bow our heads for a minute, can we? And we'll say thank you. Is there children's church this morning? I, okay. Uh, then you can go off to children's church. Okay, let's bow and pray. God, thank you for these children. They are precious in your sight and in ours as well. And we just pray, Lord, that each of us, little or big, would realize more and more who we are and who we have the potential, potential to, to be like. And so, Lord, uh, help us with that awareness. Speak to us through your word and through your spirit. Help us to be more and more like Christ and to, to be proud of that. Not pride that's lorded over someone else, Lord. But thankful and happy and appreciative that we are yours and you are ours. So bless these children, Lord, as they go today and, and everywhere they go. That they would strive to become more and more like you. More and more in love with you. And we'll praise your name, Lord. We'll give you thanks. For we ask it in Christ's name. And all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. See you later, okay? Have fun. Somebody left their Bible. Okay, there you go. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, you can follow along. I think the words are going to be up on the screen too. And mine might vary from yours just a tad, even though I'm reading from the NIV and this is from the NIV. Sometimes there's a few words that are a little different. But uh, I'm going to be reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Um, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to read through 14. So if you'd like to follow along in your Bible, please do so. If not, uh, follow along on the screen. The Apostle John has told us here familiar words that um, most all of us are very familiar with, um, have maybe studied. Um, and discovered some things through them, I hope, and I pray. Um, like I hope we'll, we'll discover today. John tells us that in the beginning was the Word, 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Of course, this text is referring to the Word as Jesus Christ. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Some text may have understood it, but the darkness has not understood the light. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is not the Apostle John that he's referring to himself. He's referring to John the Baptist, of course. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, the light of Christ. So that through him, all might believe. John the Baptist, he himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, his own people, Israel, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And John testifies, he says, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In today's world, the age-old struggle that folks have with their self-image, their self-worth, we hear it defined a lot today as self-esteem. The struggles people are having with, with their self-esteem seem to be more evident than ever before. Some folks, whether it's actually true or not, because it depends on what they believe about themselves, some folks have a, seem to have a strong, strong self-image and an, an equal amount of self-worth. They appear to feel pretty good about themselves, pretty good about where life has them at the moment. While with other folks, it may not be obvious at all how they feel about themselves. They don't wear it on their sleeve. They don't, they don't wear their faith on their sleeve. They don't wear their esteem on their sleeve. And so it's really hard to tell where some people are at with regard to self. And then there's still others where it's quite obvious that they're struggling to have any sense at all, even the slightest sense of worth or value that they see in themselves, let alone what they think other people see. And of course, there's all sorts of reasons why people feel the way they do about their self, their self-image, and whether they feel worth something or worth less. It's no secret that most folks who feel good about themselves and their sense of value, their sense of worth, or people who feel bad about themselves and their sense of worth, their sense of value, feel the way they do because of something that transpired somewhere along life's road. Something that affected them in a particular way, whether good or whether bad, and in turn affects the way they feel about themselves. 
I mean, I'm sure we've all witnessed some folks, their self-image, their sense of self-worth that's propped up, and maybe I should use the term puffed up, by how much money they have, how much wealth, how much stuff, how many possessions they've been able to accumulate over the course of their lifetime. We've probably all witnessed other folks whose life, whose esteem is propped up, puffed up by their popularity or the power they have, whether it's at work or in some other way, politically perhaps, how prestigious they may be. For some others, it's how athletic they are, how beautiful or handsome, how physically appealing uh, they believe they are. While others who seem to feel like they lack in those, some of those areas, maybe don't feel so good about themselves because they don't have the money others have, don't have the prestige other people may have, don't have the popularity other people may have, and as a result they end up sometimes having a very poor self-image as a result and possibly feel worthless. The sad truth is that a lot of people who feel either good about themselves or bad about themselves, have allowed worldly ways to dictate, to dictate to them how their worth is measured, both in their own eyes and in the eyes of other people. And if that's true, and I believe we only really need to look around, open our eyes and see the world around us, that it is true, then an awful lot of people, not just in our time, but throughout the ages, and not just in our culture, but throughout the world, are being deceived by what I would just call a big fat lie. Of course, the kinds of things that I've been talking about are not the only kinds of things that puff a person up or bring a person down. They're not the only kinds of things that contribute to the way that a person feels about themselves. Constant put-downs by others are going to weigh heavily on how a person, young or old, feels about themselves. Perhaps even harder to handle is the put-downs we sometimes put on ourselves. People of all ages struggle with issues of worth and esteem, how they're seen by other people. But we're seeing more and more and more in our day that so many young people end up being affected and oftentimes in a very negative way. Children and teens who end up in what we call a lonely place, a place of self-contempt. Self-contempt meaning hatred of oneself. We hear and we see how teenagers cut themselves because they feel they are of no value to anyone hurt themselves deliberately because of their lack of feeling good about who they are. For the teenagers here this morning, I just want to say your self-image, your self-worth, your self-esteem, you can use whatever label you want to use, need not be dictated by what others think, adults or your peers, your teenage peers. Your worth, your value, your importance is not determined that way. It's not based on what other people think or what other people say. Your worth, your value, 
your importance, as is every other human being's, red, yellow, black, or white, was determined by God before you were even born. Your value is in God. And I hope that for you and for these young children who were up here, that they'll realize someday that that's all that really matters. Who they are to God and who they are for God. There's a guy by the name of Tony Campolo, and if Tony Campolo had his way, he wrote a book. Do you remember me telling you how I went to that retreat for a weekend and you weren't allowed to talk? Some of you remember that. I didn't learn anything from it, right? Because I haven't stopped talking since I've been back. But I went to that retreat, and what can you do if you can't talk? Well, you can sleep. You can certainly pray, and that was one of the, the, the highlights of the time there. But you could also take time and read. And so when I went to the little library that they had there, I found a book that was written by Tony Campolo, who I'm already familiar with. Years, years back, and it's been a little while now, Tony Campolo was always the featured preacher, the featured speaker at the Creation Festival. 80, 90, 100,000 people there. He was always the last one to talk on the last night, and he is the one that, of, that often, well, not often, always, offered the altar call. And sometimes offered an altar call with 80, 90, 100,000 people where they have a prayer tent that holds thousands. And he directs them to the prayer tent at the end of the altar call. Go to the prayer tent. Somebody will be there to pray with you. I was there one night when there were too many people to even get in the prayer tent. So many people wanted to go forward. They couldn't even fit in the prayer tent. He had everybody pray right where they were. This is the Tony Campolo I'm talking about. He wrote a book, this book I picked up at the retreat, and in the meantime decided I wanted to buy it. So I ordered it, and it's called 20 Hot Potatoes Christians Are Afraid to Touch. Now, if that doesn't make you open, up the, open the book up, there's something wrong. 20 hot potatoes Christians are afraid to touch. And I'm touching on one of the 20 right now. Which means there's 19 more to go. Oh, wow. I'm going to have fun with this. If we're up to Tony Campolo, and he makes it clear in his book about people's perspective of who they are, then everybody's perspective of self, their self-image, their self-worth, their self-esteem would be both properly and correctly established through their relationship with God in Christ. It would come as a result of their understanding of who they are who they were created to be, and it wouldn't come as a result of somebody's world view or by any other means. In fact, he wishes all people's understanding of themselves would be just like this friend's, his friend's little girl. And he tells, this, he tells this story, Tony Campolo, and he told it years ago at creation. I still remember it, and I'm going to share it with you now. He tells this story about his friend's little girl. There was a terrible storm one night at their home. Lightning like they had never witnessed before. Thunder that literally shook the house. And this dad, realizing that his daughter up in bed must be scared out of her wits, runs up the steps, you know, two at a time to get up there in a hurry because he's so fearful that she's afraid of the lightning and afraid of the, afraid of the thunder. And when he gets up there, he opens the door and she's not in bed. And here he sees her standing on the windowsill. She's up on the windowsill with her, with her body and her face pressed up against the glass. And he says, honey, what in the world are you doing? And she says, daddy, God's trying to take my picture. <laughs> now that's the way we ought to feel. God loves us that much. You see, even this little girl knew in her heart that she was important enough, she was valuable enough, loved enough by God that he wanted to take her picture. And so listen, church. 
contrary to the world's ideas of what does or does not give importance to every single person's life is this other idea. And that idea says that all of humankind, get the word all, all of humankind has been created in God's image. Some of your texts would say likeness. Not exactly like God, of course, he's spirit and we're flesh and we're bone. The understanding by most scholars of that text is this. That our likeness, of, our likeness to God is because of our relationship with him. No one else, nothing, nothing else, I should say, not no one, nothing else in all of creation was created in the way we were. We were created in a way, put this, put this up if you would, Scott. We were created in a way, all people, all of us, have the capacity to have a unique and personal relationship with our creator. Nothing else in creation was created in that way. Only humans were created so that we could have a personal relationship with God. No one in God's eyes no one in God's eyes is better than somebody else. No one's greater, more important, no one's more valuable than anybody else. And no one is less great, less important, less valuable than anybody else. All, all people are valuable to God and have been created to have the capacity to be in a unique and personal, intimate, deep relationship with our own creator. All people everywhere have been created in a way that enables us, privileges us to be in that kind of a relationship. It doesn't matter whether we can see, we may be blind, we may not be able to hear, we may not be able to speak, but God gives us the same privilege, the same capacity to be in a relationship with him as those who can see, hear, and speak. We may not have a face. We may not have arms or legs. But we have that same privilege, that same capacity to be in relationship with our creator. We may not be an A student. We may be an F student. It does matter in school, kids. But it doesn't change your capacity to have a relationship with the Lord. Whether we have everything or whether we have nothing makes no difference. We have the same capacity to have a deep, intimate, personal relationship with our Creator. You see, because of who you are, and because of who I am, because God himself created humankind in the way that he has. You can put this next slide up too, and it's the last one. There should never be a reason for anyone to have a self-inflated or self-deflated image of oneself. Do I hear an amen? amen? No one need have an inflated image, a false image of themselves, whether inflated or deflated. God made us all and made us for himself. We are his and he is ours. The reality here though is that we must believe God loves us. We must believe God accepts us. Acceptance is huge when it comes to esteem. You'll never have a low self-esteem if you believe truly that God loves you. And he accepts you for who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been. And so like Adam and Eve to start with, because we know what happened there, we can rebel, 
We can refuse to accept God's design for humanity and for our lives too. Or, or we can choose to believe that he really has made us capable to be in a relationship with him like we can't have with anybody else. We can believe for ourselves it, that it really is true that God has created us to become, as we read in that text from John, his very own children. And as his children, we've been grafted into his family through Jesus. It's in him where we find the definition of self. Our real self-image, our real worth and value and importance. That's where we find it. We find it in him and not in some cockamamie idea or measurement of importance and value that society or the culture would impose on us. It's because of you who you are as a child of God that gives you, you the child, you the teenager, you the adult, all the importance, all the value, all the esteem you'll ever need. And I don't know about you, but I am so thankful for that. The Apostle Paul, who we would think was just the greatest thing since sliced bread, an amazing man of God, but he wasn't always that way. And there have been a lot of people who have come down the pike who have turned out to be amazing people of God, but they weren't always that way. And there's an awful lot of people who struggle today with their with their self. With really knowing who they are. And the Lord wants to change that. If that's you today, the Lord wants to change that. And I don't know if this message is maybe for nobody or one person or five people in this church. I have no idea. All I know is that there's an awful lot of people who struggle with their sense of self. Because we so often try to measure up to what the world is telling us is so important. That the world is telling us this is the way we need to go. You know, you have all the esteem you'll ever need in Christ Jesus. And so I hope and pray that you'll give him a chance to let you see that to be true for yourself. And I know for sure, I know for certain, that if you continue to walk with him, and you continue to believe, you continue to keep him at the center of your life, he'll never let you go. And you can always be assured of his love, of his acceptance, and assured of the greatest thing of all, that you are indeed his, his child. And you really don't need anything more than that. Let's pray. God, I just praise you for your great love and for your acceptance. I think of an old song of Stephen Curtis Chapman's, I'm accepted. You have made it clear, Lord, in your word that there is nothing about us Nothing in our past that would ever be held against us. That we only need to repent of those things. And if it's in the area of not feeling good about ourselves because we've allowed ourselves to be measured by the world, help us to understand in that regard too, Lord, that... 
We want to live with your guidelines in place for our life, Lord, with your word governing how we feel and reminding us of how, how loved we are, how forgiving you are. So bless us, Lord, today and every day with more and more understanding of your great love and of our value and our importance to you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for sending Christ. Thank you for his great sacrifice. Thank you for his resurrection. Thank you for inviting us into your family and giving us this great inheritance that we have through Christ. Because that inheritance includes our esteem, how we feel about ourselves, and how we see the whole world, how we live and how we serve. For that, Lord, we'll be ever grateful. And so, receive our gratitude today, Lord. May you have all the glory and praise now and always. And God's people said, Amen. I'm going to sing a closing song, closing hymn, and I'd really like it to be your prayer because as I mentioned a moment ago, if we keep Jesus at the center of our lives, we have the assurance, the blessed assurance, uh, that we are his. Jesus is mine. Jesus is yours. So let's stand and sing as we close. Be the center. Okay, that's the end of the other one. <laughs> there, it'll just be a second, Scott.
I love it too. I'll sing them all. I pray that as you leave here today, or whether you're going to Sunday school, wherever you're doing, whatever you're doing, whatever your plans are, that your plans are his plans for your life. And that you really will make him the center. Not just off in a corner somewhere, but right smack dab in the center. And that in him you will grow and you will mature to be that person God has been working in you all along. And he's working in all of us. No one's made it yet. We're all on a, it's a process. We're all on the way. But praise God, it's the way he would have us go. And so go in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Isn't that a beautiful name? And know that you are loved. And know that you are accepted. And know that you have all the esteem you'll ever need. All the worth. All the importance. Because it's all found in Christ Jesus the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God's people said, Amen. We are in ministry together to make disciples for Jesus Christ, empowered by God's Holy Spirit, and relying fully on God's Word. We stand firm in our mission as a community of faith, bound together in Christ, to proclaim the love of God to all people. Now we're going to sing, and we're going to sing a cappella, the words to this song. It's found 186 in your hymnal. It's just a simple song. We're going to sing it through. We've sung it before, so you know it. Um, it's simply called, Lord Be Glorified. And as we put him at the center of our life, he's going to be glorified. He's going to be honored. He's going to be praised. And so let's sing it together. In my life, Lord, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day in the Lord. God bless you.